Greetings Hunters! In our last video we took a close look at focus and determined exactly how long it takes for a single damage cycle with the bow. And we took a deep dive on how much that was affected by the focus skill. After quite a bit of slow motion footage and a bit of maths later, we got our answer. But ultimately, that just left us with with some unanswered questions. Around the same time the game was hit by some balance adjustments and well. Although bow feels the same during normal gameplay, quite a lot was changed around those damage numbers flashing on the screen. If you haven't watched our first video a link will be provided in the description below. You'll find that, although this all started with an analysis of the focus skill, it ended with a rabbit hole that only got deeper. My name is Johnny Tapas and together we're going to jump down that rabbit hole and begin to answer a few of those questions. Let's begin our deeper analysis of bow gameplay in Monster Hunter now. Question 1. What are the limitations of humans during Monster Hunter Now gameplay? We discovered that the game has theoretical limits. 13 damage cycles without the use of focus and up to 17 damage cycles with the use of focus 5. But can humans actually accomplish this with all of the random happenings like rolling and perfect dodges and the use of our special skill, all wrapped up in a 75 second battle in MHM? Well I for one certainly can't. Not only am I generally casual when it comes to mechanical skill, I have a curse. The moment I hit the screen record button, my thumb gets so fat you'd think I smashed it with a hammer. So for this we'll have to outsource. Introducing Anti-Piraticful or Inside of MHN also known as Ha Ha Ha. After weeks of trying myself and searching for human perfection, I found this clip, and they were nice enough to give me permission to use it. So can a human produce 17 damage cycles using Focus 5, with all of the variables in play? Let's review together. Wow 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 holy shurm um yeah. Anyhow there is a link to that video in the description below. Please go pay Antipyreticful a visit and give them the thumbs up they deserve. Go ahead and subscribe while you're there. So what can we unpack from this display? Well, I did say in the focus video that I didn't think 17 damage cycles was humanly possible. Granted there are two perfect dodges and two special attacks in this battle. But there were also three rolls and some minor extended charge dashes, so I think we can fairly call this a 17 damage cycle display. A perfect example of human limits, and verification of the concepts discussed in our last video. The idea of cycles completed in a time frame leads us right into the next topic we left unanswered. We mentioned that focus may actually do more for us the worse we play. Not every battle is an anime highlight reel. We're human and few battles will go the way the one we just watched did. Which means. Our average maximum damage cycles is not 13 without the aid of focus. It's more like 10 or 11. Or maybe even 12 on a good run. 13 would be the dream, possible but unrealistic to expect. We mentioned that the damage increase was somewhere between 23% and 31% if you got 3 to 4 extra cycles from focus at theoretical perfection. But. We're not perfect. 
If we get 3 to 4 extra cycles from focus over 10 to 12 cycles or normal human standards, we're actually getting more value from focus. There's no quote, actual bonus. It all depends on your gameplay and how well the fight goes, but here's some math on the screen to reflect what I'm saying. This is all just theory but you're more likely to get a 20% to 40% bonus with an average of 30% than numbers that reflect the maximum possible 23% to 31% bonus with an average of 27%. Obviously perfect play is always going to hold the best outcome. But the bonus we get from focus during average gameplay is equal to or greater than any other raw damage buff in the game. The bonus you get from focus does apply to elemental damage but whether or not it's better varies at different stages of the game. And thus, the rabbit hole gets deeper. That topic deserves its own video. Now is a good time to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe so that you won't miss the rest of this rabbit hole. The last question we left unanswered has to do with the Black Diablo's bow. You see the Sarah Coilbender doesn't need to fully charge to deliver its maximum potential. It gets a fully charged shot at only charge level 3. Here are the other moving parts. A full bow charge takes 3.5 seconds while using Focus 5. For an additional animation that falls just under 2 seconds, we get to duplicate the attack, but the damaged is halved. This attack feels instant, but you are animation locked for 1.95 seconds before you can begin your next action. Well if the Sarah Coilbender doesn't need to use the full 3.5 seconds to charge, is this extra 2 second animation even worth the half damage it provides? How long does it take to charge the bow to level 3? How many level 3 charges can we complete in 75 seconds without the extra animation? Compare this to a charge 3 shot plus the extra animation lock to get a total of 150% damage per cycle? And how many cycles can we complete in the 75 second battle window? Ultimately, is that extra tap for half damage even worth it when this bow reaches its peak so much faster than the others? Let's test. We're only going to test with Focus 5. Because I think the half damage animation is worth it, but that's based on feeling alone. I'm about to find out with you whether or not I'm right or wrong. In this first clip, we're once again at 1 8th speed. We're looking at a charge 3 shot plus the additional tap for a duplicate shot at half damage. It is to note that my human error is left in this clip. The total rotation took 31,500 milliseconds. Speed that up to real time and it took 3,937.5 milliseconds. I could theoretically complete this 19 times in a 75 second battle window. That's 19 full damage attacks and 19 half damage attacks. Or should we just converted this to full damage? it would be 28.5 full damage attacks. So where was the human error and how much? Also did it make a difference? Well I lost one third of a second between the time my charge was complete and the time I released the shot and tapped for the second attack. And yes, if I had played better, the time save would have allowed for 20 rotations. Converted to 30 full damage attacks. Now for the question at hand. Can we complete 29 or more? maybe 30 or more, charge 3 shots in the allowed 75 second battle window? If the answer is yes, we can conclude that the extra tap for half damage is not worth it or at least not necessary. Well here it is hunters. 1 full charge 3 shot. This includes the time it takes for me to regain control of my hunter and begin the second charge shot. The total time was 21,270 milliseconds or sped up to real time. 2658.75 milliseconds. This did include human error, but this time I performed much better and only lost one sixth of a second. And now for the verdict. I could complete this full damage shot 28 times in a 75 second window. The extra tap is ever so slightly a bit more damage. However, if you skip it to dodge or reposition, the penalty is all but non-existent. It's very safe to say over the course of a battle, both options are comparable while using Focus 5 along with your Sarah Coilbender. There are times where repositioning yourself is simply more important than extending your animation lock. 
so it's very good to know skipping the extra tap with your B blows bow doesn't effectively cripple your damage. Sometimes repositioning sets you up for a perfect dodge. More on that in the closing. Once again we gained some new questions while answering some old ones. Maybe you noticed in some of the clips that the damage on a grade 7 level 2 Sarah coilbender was trash. How much are we affected by hitting a missing the monster's weak points? How much are we affected by being at the proper range or not? And just how in the hell does Antipyretic pull off those unusual looking perfect dodges? Well I won't make you wait for that answer at least, but let me give credit where credit is due. You can get the answer to that question from Atlas. There's a link in the description to his video showing how to pull off these perfect dodges in detail. Make sure to like and subscribe while you're there. Anyhow, next time we'll take a closer look at the effects of weak points and range and there's always the topic of focus versus elemental damage. Thank you for watching Hunters, we'll see you in the next video.